Hello, my name is Sean Hargreaves. I'm uh, just doing this little uh, show and tell on a creature I did here, um, sculpted in ZBrush. Um, I know I want to do something with kind of like um, an arachnid with some kind of plates, so I'm just um, sculpting a single plate here, um, working on the top and the bottom knowing that it's going to be multiplied um, later on. So here I'm trying to get some big picture shapes in and um, knowing again that this will all be multiplied and um, just keeping in mind that there's going to be plates sitting on plates and what that's going to look like. Kind of had like one of those deep sea creatures in mind. So here, here I've multiplied the plates, doing a little bit of posing. and. I imported it into Modo, um, rendered it out, um, a bunch of different passes. So here I am in Photoshop, I brought the different passes into Photoshop, and I'm going through them here. So I've got like blue passes and subsurface scattering passes, um, I've got a depth pass and an alpha pass so that I can, um, I can just remove the background. It's very important this part of uh, illustration because you're organizing all of your, all of your images, getting them in the right position um, in the layer stack. And um, I'm going to be erasing certain areas there, thereby revealing other areas underneath. So you have to think about what you're going to do there in terms of what's going to be underneath, what's going to be on top, when to flatten or combine those layers. Here I'm removing the background. What I'm doing here is um, I'm just going to get rid of the the depth pass here. I'm going to import the depth pass into Photoshop as a separate page. And I'm choosing the entire page and I'm bringing it into my channels at the bottom there where it says Alpha 1. And that's going to be used for my um, depth of field later. So now I'm back into my regular layer stack here and just doing some more organization looking at some reference here of uh, sea creatures it's always good to have them to look at I have a dual monitors so I have um, my reference on one monitor and work my work on another monitor at the very least it's uh, something to be inspired by um, and also they have great colors um, but here I'm really really interested in some of these deep sea creatures where you have a lot of subsurface scattering underneath the layers of, of, of the surface of the skin and I'm trying to get that um, when I'm doing this rendering or at least a certain amount of it it's very translucent And I know that this creature is something that's very, very tiny. I'm just doing some uh, color variations here in adjustments. Some of my illustrations are more technical involved than others. Um, where I'm using, I use adjustment layers and clipping masks. Um, this is pretty. This one's pretty straightforward. I'm trying not to get too involved. Sometimes it's just it's nice to just let the technical stuff go and just you know try and be an artist.
So here I'm erasing this layer, thereby revealing the warmth of the layer underneath. And this will help isolate some of the plates and just some of the shapes in general. Breaking it up. I'm just simply using just the, um, the the preset chalk brush that comes with Photoshop. Um, that's a great brush. I mean, it has um, a great texture to it and can do quite a lot with it um, using it um, as an eraser. And as it erases, it gives it, uh, you know, it's giving it a certain type of texture. Concentrating on the tips. I don't yet know what I'm going to do in terms of the eyes. But you see, as you go in close here, you see the texture the short, short brush is giving. You can really pull out certain areas of shapes. Obviously, if you're animating a 3D character, a creature like this, you couldn't do it this way. Um, you would have to do texture maps or UV maps in the 3D program. And uh, this is all um, here. This is all obviously just for stills. Um, and it's just a great um, workflow, um, relatively quick. So here I'm just kind of checking on my layers and seeing what works. I do a lot of blends in the in the in the layers, you know. Um, one of my favorites is soft light. Um, pin light is another one, but soft light is nice because it kind of has a certain kind of infection with the other layers and blends in quite nicely. And you can vary the opacity of the layer um, with that. I had an idea when I did some of these render passes in Modo that um, I was going to have like glowing edges and it was going to be one of those glowing deep sea creatures. Um, but then once I started rendering this by hand, kind of breaking it up, um, I kind of liked what I saw and I, I, I thought it might be a distraction if I had a lot of glowing stuff. Um, so. I didn't really go end up going in that direction, but I had the option anyway. Um, so here I'm just I'm zoomed in to what I'm thinking is going to be the face, or it's going to have some eyes in there. Um, I don't really know what I'm going to do in terms of eyes. I, I I kind of like creatures without eyes, without too many noticeable features. So um, I'm probably going to do some relatively small eyes here. Um, now I think when I recorded this I went and got a cup of coffee so this is kind of uh, 
Okay, I'm back. Um, so here I'm just kind of I'm fiddling. I'm just searching. Don't worry, I'm not going to go black with the eyes. Um, it didn't work. White eyes are always pretty alarming, I think. Not that I'm trying to do something scary here, but there's certainly a simple thing like that is quite different. Almost looks like it has a bit of a smiley face there, like a dolphin. So I go back in later and hit the eyes some more. Just doing uh, bigger picture stuff, big brush strokes here. I'll punch up some of the reds here. filling in the background. I know the background is going to change, so it's just a placeholder right now. Just nibbling away here. Revealing the red layer underneath. Back into the eyes again. Keep pulling back and going back in, just kind of like you would doing if you're doing a real painting. You kind of back off and you get in close and you walk back a bit, it's just to see how it's feeling, how it's looking from different distances. I'm fiddling around with the background here. I end up doing something very, very subtle. Barely any light coming in. Most of these sea creatures, when you see the reference, they're lit from the front lit because it's coming from the um, from the sub that's um, discovered it. So um, that's that's how I lit this. Here's the little bits of detritus and things that float around down there just pl kind of placing them almost like stars. I usually do them two or three layers. I'll do one layer, bang it out of focus, then do another layer, it's probably going to be in focus, then a third layer, it's going to be really out of focus. Um, I'll give it three layers of depth, and then working with the opacity in the layer as well. So here I'm using my um, depth pass. Um, if you go up to um, filters and uh, blur and then lens blur, it will have your alpha in there. And you can basically touch the area that you want to be in focus and it will be in focus and the rest will drop out of focus. Then with a the toggle you can toggle it, the um, diameter of the focus forward or backward and um, it'll give it 
the relatively true depth of field. It's a bit of a cheat because you're not using the depth of field of the camera that you rendered it from, but it's um, pretty good. It certainly is a lot quicker. Works good for again for still still images. So here I'm just touching the front here. It's in focus and toggling up and down. And you see the tail drops out of focus. I'm trying to work on seeing if I need to make the tail transparent or darker. So I end up doing something again quite subtle. It's interesting you find that really less really is more. I mean you just do little bits and um, it makes a difference, but it doesn't have to make it always have to make a giant statement. So here I'm gonna uh, do a few more of these um, dots. And there are also animals floating around, little tiny, tiny animals. When you're working at a scale like this, which is a tiny little creature, you know your manipulation of your focus is is a great friend because um, it really, it really, really is a, a great thing to give that feeling of scale. Punching up, going to punch up the eye, uh, the rim around the eyes a little bit more. I mean, eyes they they can they can make a break your image if if you screw up the eyes, you you're just done. A few more dots. It's my third layer. Just erasing a little bit, a little bit of control there, and then just a little bit of blur. Now what I want to do here is I'm going to duplicate the layer, and I'm going to use unsharp mask under filters, filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. I got to like 120, and the whole thing gets uh, has a certain kind of. Uh, it says unsharp, but it looks sharp. Um, then on the top layer, the layer, I switch the layers around. So I take the unsharp and mask layer, put it underneath, and the other one above it, and then I erase the one that's softer, thereby revealing the sharpened one underneath, just on certain areas, just in the face and the front probably the front quarter of the, of the creature and then it just kind of gives it a little bit more of a the crispness to the front and your eyes go right to that so I'm just about done here I'm finished did my little framing there and uh, all done so I hope you like that and uh, check back for some more later.